and they had this brilliant technology that it just, I mean, it's disruptive and it, and it was like, wow, people don't know about it. And it's because to some extent of what I was saying before, they were targeting um, mm-hmm. the early adopters and they were, they were just honing their skills, even though they had something that was brilliant to begin with and, and every project they've done has been a success. Mm-hmm. It's um, and, the, and the tech, it actually was originally developed for oil and gas, for offshore and onshore. And um, it's it's interesting because it it just gives so much more information and accurate information um, on, so, on what's, what's undercover. Yeah, and Jeff, it, it, yeah. And Jeff, so we put that in the virtual worlds, but then we said to these guys, "Love what you're doing. Don't like the way you're marketing it. Can we be?" Can we work with you? Yeah, can we be your partner? Can you, yeah, yeah. All and, that and stuff. just over over time, as as we got to know one another, um, we we formulated that relationship. Yeah. And so and now we we um, we partner with them. We represent them. Um, we we're, we're seriously taking it to market. Well, no kidding. I mean, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And I'm I'm nobody to explain it because I'm still learning. Yeah. Um, but I would love to get the basic overview of kind of how it works yeah, without sure. giving away anything right that is it's not like we can give away as much as we can with the reason um yeah that's what i mean so the 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 technology the miners uh who, who hear this shouldn't shouldn't be surprised that, that they're going to recognize it where i say okay it's it's magnetics or electromagnetic and they go oh yeah yeah we've seen that yes you have there's all forms of electromagnetic. I mean, they've got their seismic and gravimetric. There's 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 loads of ways to explore, and there's there's uh, you know there's ground penetrating um, radar and um, uh, at different wavelengths. The dilemma with uh, a lot of the the what 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 I would call active technology that miners use is the deeper you go, the more the signals disperse and. Um, the the less accuracy you get so that's problem because you know, they, they take their data and they see there's something there and they go right well we're going to drill here and and because the the information they've got is not sufficiently precise at depth they might miss their target by 20 meters and they're mm. going to oh, well <laughs> A big deal until you figure out how much an offshore well costs, you know, and, and they're, you know, 35, 50 million, some of them. Mm-hmm. It's not cheap to drill a hole. And even onshore, you know, um, a hole with depth can cost you a million bucks. So, <clears throat> so th- th- that's, th- there are, there's, there's a lot of good technology that miners use and will continue to use, but I, I, pers- I see that it's just not giving them the, the, um, the accuracy they want, which is what leads to those statistics. You know, I describe the exploration model for mining as as god awful, um, and it's I'm being a little provocative. The miners are their their, their attitude is no, it's what we it's what we've always had. We have to live with it, mm-hmm. uh, and I hear that, but it's like you know, god awful is is something that takes a long time, three five years. You know, we've got one client who's who's just finishing a piece of exploration that's gone on for twenty four years. Oh my Ouch. gosh. Yeah, and it's and and they, you know, that they finally discovered what you know would be described as bonanza in terms of um, you know a, a, a gold reserve. All that time to get there, yeah, the cost of the time. You know, if they'd been mining twenty years ago, holy left and that would have been produced. So, t- the time thing, yeah, it drives me crazy, and I know it drives them crazy. Um, the the cost, it's really expensive to to do that, but. But what is ugly with that is the success rate. It's it's you know, it, it, some people say it's one in ten, some one in twenty. It's kind of in that five to ten percent range. And so there's the, these big time investments, big capital expense, um, and and low success rate. Mm. And then you know, you've got your environmental complications and several other things. And you also wind up with not much data because it's so expensive to drill the holes. That you got a bit of accurate data where you drill the holes, and then you know the rest is from all the other forms of uh, um, survey that you've done, and you attempt to integrate that data. Mm-hmm. Um, the the way the 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 oil and gas finder and mineral uh, technology goes about it that's different is number one, it's passive, 
Now, that's a big thing to get your head around, right? Um, what does that mean? Passive is, is measuring changes in the Earth's magnetic field. And again, the miners should be leaning back saying, this is nothing new, Jeff. <laughs> Heard this one before, right? Yeah. Good at just okay. saying that. The difference is we're looking at distortions in the Earth's magnetic field at the resonant frequency of the mineral or, you know, the oil, the gas, the condensate, whatever. <laughs> uh, in the deep blue and ultraviolet spectrum. Now, that should have some of the miners sit up and take notice. It's like, hang on a second, Jeff, that's totally different end to the spectrum where mostly we're operating. Mostly it's in the microwave, uh, you know, the infrared, the other, and, and much longer wavelength. When, when the, the spectrum that we're looking at, you know, the wavelengths you're measuring are sort of 50 to maybe three, 400 nanometers. Mm -hmm. They're tiny, tiny, tiny. Which, which means your, your, um, your precision shifts. Even with you know the, the, the some of the things that happen um, uh, as as uh, you know electromagnetic signals move through the crust of the Earth, um, mm -hmm. the wavelengths are so small that you're still retaining accuracy. So that I, I think they understand that sort of those electromagnetic physics and the geophysics enough. I hope to sit up and take notice and go, okay, yeah. Number one, the wavelengths are different, so the accuracy is going to be higher. Yep. Number two, hey, hang on, no one else is doing that. Damn right, no one else is doing it. We're not <laughs> looking at the resonant frequencies in the minerals because that information is not published, by the way. It's proprietary to the company. But we've done all the research to find yeah. those resonant frequencies. And, and yeah, we're, and, and it also, you know, we'll look at things like, you know, diamonds and emeralds and gems, not just metalliferous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, so that's the first thing. And um, and, and it's, it's a multi stage process, typically. <clears throat> What we do in, in phase one, uh, so three phases, and then a, a, a um, if you like, a remote phase, a field phase, and then in the lab where the AI and neural net software is doing all of the, uh, you know, excuse me, pattern recognition and pulling the data from the multiple sources together and making a 3D map. Mm -hmm. um, so phase one, typically we're grabbing satellite data and we're looking at a big area. And we're looking to see in that big area, is there something there? And 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 most of the time, um, and, and when we're looking at that area, by the way, straight away we're looking underground. We're not looking for surface evidence. Yeah. Because of the way we're doing it, we're seeing it underground. Yeah. How deep, Jeff? Um, 9.8 kilometers, round it to 10 if you like. Which, okay. which is, you know, okay, that's that's dandy, but who minds that deep? <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, I kind of, yeah, we can see long way, way, way yeah. further than most people can mine it. Oh, but, there you go. Okay. Which is kind of, you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that word? <laughs> it's, it's deep enough as the answer for most miners would, would, would give you. It's, okay. It's like, yeah. The mark you know, the areas for the future. Purposes. Yeah, they don't need to see that far. Um, and, and and so what what comes out of that is an appreciation that you know maybe we have looked at yeah you know, hundred square kilometers. I mean there've been times where we've been asked to look at you know two hundred thousand square kilometers, and and in that area there you go. No, <laughs> the, 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 there's evidence of these specific minerals um, in these places, and then uh, the the client decides whether they want to go back and do phase two, which is the field work where we get a lot more accuracy. Mm -hmm. And the field work we get on the ground, and there's two different places there where uh, we're taking much more precise measurements, but still, uh, um, and it's, it's uh, yeah, we call it FSPEF um, is, is one, you know, um, and, and the ZERS, which is both, you know, they're acronyms, the miners, or the, certainly the geophysicists would recognize. Yeah. And, and again, looking at the resonant frequency of the mineral of interest, um, and so, you know, FSP, forming short, forming pulse. short pulse electromagnetic yeah, exactly. fields. Yeah. VERS is the vertical electromagnetic sounding. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. And um, what what we do is, of course, take a lot more sample points and um, and get very precise uh, indications of what's there and where it is, and then we we go back to the lab and um, and integrate all that data, and they wind up with. Um, 
a map that will have at the low end 15,000, but more typically maybe 50,000 data points. Oh my gosh. And, and yeah, and a, and a three dimensional picture of what's there. We can also see the water. We can see the, you know, the geology. So we can show them the, you know, the, the yeah. fault lines and <clears throat> all that sort of stuff. The water I just skipped over, but the miners tend to get excited about that because of it's, you know, but usually it's, <clears throat> it's something they don't want to mess with. Right. Yeah, it, it can be inconvenient to to not. So they so they want to stay away from that. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, because you've you've got in some places you do literally have underground flows. Um, yeah, 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 and you, you, you're busy, you know, um, drilling away. You didn't know it's there. Now you got a water problem. However, if we could, if you could utilize that, if somebody was looking for water and let's say oh yeah you could there's the water water word. finder technology version we, we call it oil and gas finder which which goes about it in a slightly different way the mineral finder and mm -hmm. the water finder but um yeah and it's look you know one of the things that i've skipped over there the oil and gas gas guys get excited because um it also tells them the pressure oh, which is God. interesting yeah so it's like hey that's what's there and you know hey there's there's and, and they're getting a three dimensional view of it. And you know, there, there, there's your oil, there's your gas, you know, there's the water, you know, the salt, the condensate, whatever. And um, but it's you know, it's it's been interesting. We with the oil and gas finder technology, we've come in on a number of projects where they've done some um, some work already. You would expect they've done some seismics, and they have. Mm -hmm. and they may have even drilled. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of one where they'd. Um, they they drilled and hit one dry well because their their data wasn't accurate enough. They drilled and found yeah there really was gas and, and um, uh, stuff there, but their their data was telling them there were the indications that there might be oil as well. So which so we came in and did the mineral finder tech for them over a period of twelve weeks. It only takes that long. That's the other thing, speed. Yeah. Um, and uh, for a, from, from their perspective, the, the investment's small. You know, is what they say this is less than 1% of our budget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> less than 1% of our budget to move from, you know, say 20% confidence about uh, our data to yeah. 98%. You know, the accuracy sort of sits in that 94, 98% range. Yeah. So um, we, we gave them a, a new map that showed them they missed a couple of gas bodies and why they had a dry well because – their data wasn't quite pre precise, but we also showed them that there was oil underneath, and that they, because we could see deeper, um, so so they they drilled another hole and they found the oil. <laughs> That's and, awesome. Uh, and the, and yeah, as, as they said, the time saving they thought would on that was probably three years. And wow. then the exploration, the exploration saving they they thought was a uh, somewhere in the eight to ten million range on, on that project because they would have drilled a number of extra wells before they eventually found what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, we've we've had other ones. Uh, that was an onshore one. We've had offshore ones, same thing. Mm -hmm. We <clears throat> had done some work, had drilled one well that was successful and one that was dry, and so they wanted more data before they drilled anymore. And, and I was just, you know, we did, did our, um, the analysis for the mineral, uh, the oil and gas finder tech. And it was like, you could literally see on the map we gave them why they had a dry well. I missed it by 100 meters. That was all. Their data wasn't, you know, they were so close. Yeah. That's... Strong down was excited. <clears throat> wow. So, so uh, yeah, it's, well, it's very amazing. Like, and I've looked through the case studies and I've looked through, I mean, it's yeah. impressive. I can't talk about that because that's, confidential but well, the, I, if there's the, anybody if anybody because there's always this mindset of like oh well we maybe yeah. we could do that ourselves or we could go develop this ourselves i'm curious you know for, you could. well you could but what yeah. what is what is the barrier we'll talk to you in 10 years <laughs> <laughs> there you go okay yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that that's a good and point. it's yeah what's the cost of the 10 year play but as, as, as we say it's a bit of a it's a bit of a game changer because yeah, you know, I, I started by saying I really have compassion for for the miners. That what I call the god awful model: long time, high expense, low success rate. Um, just not a nice equation. We wheel in and we say, "Hey, you know, <laughs> we think we're smart. <laughs> we got something that's quick. It takes twelve weeks. Hey, it's not expensive. You know, it's it's uh, we can cut your exploration costs by at least eighty percent." 
And by the way, it's it's very accurate. And also, oh, it's environmentally friendly. You don't have to get all these permits that take three years. You know, you're not you're, you're not going to tick off the um, <clears throat> uh, oh gosh, 